This is uh, Block 11, Reagan's Revolution, Section 2, Carter and Malays, with the section of the Camp David Accords. President Carter's greatest success as president uh, came in the realm of Middle Eastern diplomacy. If we remember back to Block 9, there was the Yom Kippur War. The Yom Kippur War uh, was a victory for the Israelis, but the Arabs had done well enough where Arab pride was restored, uh, but Israeli strength was confirmed. Uh, this led uh, the president of Egypt, um, Nasser had died, the new president was uh, Anwar, uh, Anwar Sadat. Um, Egypt and its president Sadat um, explored the possibility of a treaty uh, between the world's largest Arab state and the world's only Jewish state. Um, Israeli Prime Minister Menachem Begin, and there he is in the picture, uh, in a Nixon goes to China move, uh, moment, invited President Sadat uh, to address the Israeli Parliament. Uh, and then, in an incredibly brave move, uh, Sadat accepted. Uh, Sadat traveled to Israel to much fanfare, addressed the Israeli Parliament, and publicly said that he desired peace uh, with Israel. President Carter jumped at the opportunity to offer his good offices. He invited both leaders to Camp David, uh, the presidential retreat in Maryland, and then Carter served personally as a go-between. Um, that Begin and the Israelis were kind of in one room, Sadat and the Egyptians were in another, and President Carter kind of served as a mediator uh, between the two camps, uh, and serving as a go-between with the um, desire to make peace uh, the Camp David Accords were signed in 1978, and then a few months later, um, a formal peace treaty was signed between Sadat and Menachem Begin, and there are the three men uh, shaking hands after signing those agreements. Um, and it was the first formal peace treaty between any of the Arab countries uh, and the State of Israel. And the fact that it was the strongest and the leader of the Arab countries made it especially important. Um, in exchange for peace with Egypt, Israel gave back most of the land taken in the 1967 war uh, from Egypt in exchange for that peace. This was a world-changing event that if you looked at the history of the Middle East, there were wars in the Middle East uh, between uh, Israel and its Arab neighbors in 1948, 1956, 1967, 1973, and then no major wars uh, between the Israelis and the Arab nations uh, with the exception of Israel's invasion of Lebanon in 1982, but that did not involve uh, the major Arab nations of the world, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, uh, Iraq, etc. That this was a major, major event, and the peace treaty between Israel and Egypt um, from 1979 to this day has kind of served as the foundational fact of Middle Eastern diplomacy. Sadat paid for the treaty with his life. Um, he was assassinated three years later by radical Arabs uh, for whom peace with Israel was an impossibility. Um, Menachem Begin, his successor in the peace process, uh, the man who signed uh, the peace treaty with Jordan, the man who signed a peace treaty with the Palestinian, um, the PLO, um, Yitzhak Rabin, Begin's successor, uh, was assassinated in 1995 by a radical Israeli uh, for signing a treaty of peace with the Palestinians. So we're talking about two very brave men, Sadat and Begin. Sadat paid for it with his life uh, against people on his own side that could not accept peace with Israel. And Begin's successor, Yitzhak Rabin, uh, he paid for it with his life too from an Israeli who could not accept uh, peace with the Palestinians. Um, like I said, this treaty between Israel and Egypt forms the foundation of um, the modern diplomatic Middle East, and now the fact that is, uh, Egypt has been kind of taken over by the Muslim Brotherhood as their new government uh, does not particularly bode well for the future uh, of this 30-year, um, 35-year-old peace agreement. Uh, so something to watch uh, in the world. Camp David, it's President Carter's greatest success.